Hello, everyone. Welcome today. Welcome to today's program, Platforms to Sell. My name is Caitlin Tipps, and I am a public services librarian senior with Plano Public Library. And I'm Emily Raymond. I'm also a public services librarian at the Plano Public Library. And today we're going to be your presenters for this program. We will both be monitoring the chat for any questions. And before we begin, we need to let you know about some ground rules that we've set up for today's program. You will be muted during this class and we have your video blocked. You will only see the instructor screen. At, at the, the top of, oh, go sorry. Ahead. at the top of the screen, you can find the exit full screen option if you need to get to other things on your computer. You are welcome to ask questions or request that the instructor repeat information at any time during today's program. You should see an icon at the bottom of your screen that says chat. Click on that to open the chat window. Chat is set to be seen by library staff only. If you prefer, you can also use the Q&A feature located at the bottom of your screen to ask questions. Please note that any inappropriate questions or comments will cause your immediate removal from today's class. For all questions, we may answer you directly in the chat or Q&A box. Hold the question until a break or the end of class or ask the question at the time if it is pressing. On our website, you can also find a link for today's handout or any accompanying material for this program. We will share any links related to this program in the chat box. We will be using the instructor screen to demonstrate and may share additional resources in the chat as well. A recording of today's program will be available in a few days. So if you'd like to watch today's program and then follow um, along, take notes, um, that is an option. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Okay. Um, so this is today's program agenda, and we will be providing a brief overview of different online platforms for selling pro products. It is very important for us to first um, have this disclaimer. So we want to emphasize we are not business export experts, we are librarians. And the purpose of today's class is to provide general information um, as well as provide an overview of available online platforms. Um, this class will not guarantee you are using the best platform to sell. Again, this is just to provide you the, the available options and determine for yourself which one will work best for the purpose you are trying to, to use it for. And these are not the only options you have available to you. These are just select resources and options that we have decided to highlight for today's program. Exactly. However, if you do need further business exper expertise, please connect with the Dallas SCORE mentor. Uh, they are available each week at Schimmelfinick Library for a free consultation. And you can register online at planolibrary.org for more information or find their phone number online as well to call and set that up. So, what are online selling platforms? What are we here today to discuss? Well, first and foremost, these are platforms used for the purpose of online shopping where consumers use uh, to make, with, promise I can talk. Um, th these are platforms used to make direct purchases of goods or services from a seller available. They are also known as digital marketplaces, platforms for both sellers and buyers. These digital storefronts are an online representation of your business. And it's also where you can publish those products online. All entrepreneurs and businesses can access these and they range in variety um, for what they look like from websites to um, storefronts within an online platform. And we're going to break down what those look like. 
So today we will be talking about three different types of online platforms you can use to sell your products. Those include online sales and auction sites, e-commerce management sites, as well as social commerce marketplaces. We're going to talk about each of these and related platforms within these categories a, lot, a little more in depth in the upcoming slides. We are first going to start with online sales and auctions. Now, these are platforms that support the sale of goods, products, or services from an online format. They range from consumer to business, business to business, and consumer to consumer. So online sales and auctions is a term that just refers to things like eBay or Amazon. Um, and we're going to go over examples of this type of digital platform in the next few slides. So we first have eBay. eBay was founded in 1995 by Pierre Amidier, and it was originally known as Auction Web. This is an example of a consumer to consumer and business to consumer platform. And it has a targeted range of products for collectibles and vintage items, decor and furnishings, appliances, computers, equipment, and a whole lot more. Essentially anything that you perceive has value, you can try and sell on eBay. It can range from pattern items for selling, uh, sewing, as well as collectible items such as vintage Barbie dolls or action figures or vintage furnishings and, and a whole lot more. Um, eBay is a platform where you can set a base starting price and allow your consumers to bid on the pieces um, to try and either uh, control the price that they purchased it at or to outbid other consumers hoping to purchase the same item. Etsy was founded in 2005 by Robert Kalin, Chris McGuire, Haim Shafik, and Jared Tarbell. Etsy is an example of a business to consumer marketplace. On Etsy, each Etsy seller has their own personal storefront. In order to have a storefront, um, these, these sellers must pay a listing fee of about 20 cents per item in order to list their products. There are additional fees associated with your storefront, including a 6.5% fee on, of the final price, plus a 5% fee of the postal cost. Etsy is a wonderful option if you're looking to sell handmade items, vintage craft items, so things that are usually about 20 years old or older, um, as well as very unique items that are one of a kind, craft supplies, personal, personalized items, and much, much more. And then we have Amazon. This was actually founded in 1994 by Jeff Bezos, and it was originally known as Cadabra Incorporated. It is an example of business to business as well as business to consumer. Amazon does have an individual selling fee of 99 cents per item, as well as a professional selling fee of 39.99 per month. The difference between these is if you are more of a corporation or if you're doing a lot of business on Amazon versus just starting off selling a few items um, as a side hustle. Uh, Amazon is a very open marketplace. So their targeted products for um, getting online tend to be very um, far in range. It can range from groceries to household items, books, electronics, apparel, beauty products, toys, and more. Um, they have also gotten into drop shipping. So if you're looking to sell personalized t-shirts and even more ready to print items, Amazon has a program for that. 
So it definitely is a platform that has a broad range of appeal, depending on your consumer base, your audience base. So if you're trying to just get somewhere online that has a broad base already, Amazon is a decent option. So next we're going to talk about e-commerce management digital marketplaces. So how are these different from sales and auctions? Well, this is actually a software application that allows a business owner or entrepre entrepreneur to manage their website, marketing, sales, and operations. It has a host of benefits, such as building customer engagement, having tools to support your sales and marketing strategies. It offers more scalable growth and it's perfect for any type of product or business. So what does this mean and what kind of platforms are within this uh, e-commerce management identity, this type of platform? Well, before we jump into the different ones, this is mostly about website hosting. So if you are interested in starting your own website and doing something like blogging, or even just having your own website to sell your products, this is the type of platform for you. Some different options within this are wordpress.com and .org. And this is a web content management system released in 2003 founded by Matt Mullenweg and Mike Little. It is an example of business to consumer and it's really open to any kind of product. I said that at the beginning of this type of digital marketplace, it's a completely customizable option per your product type. Now, what is the difference between .com and .org and why is that important? So wordpress.org is great because it offers both paid and free options available. It's a lot easier to access and it comes with a pre-installed SSL certificate. Uh, now, what is SSL? That is Secure Socket Slayer. It is a standard technology for securing an internet connection by encrypting data sent between a website and a browser or between multiple servers. This is essential for preventing hackers reading and stealing customer information. Now, again, there are some cons to the, this and that's that it's not as customizable. When you're paying into wordpress.com, it doesn't allow you to have those advanced customization features. Um, the free version does come with a lot of ads and it's not ad revenue that you get to take advantage of either your subdomain, um, so your domain is your website name. So if you want to have your business be www.yourbusiness.com, you, that's your domain name. And you need to make sure that that's available. Now with wordpress.com, your subdomain would end with wordpress.com, which does not necessarily make it the most memorable. Now with wordpress.org, the pro to this is it's completely free and free unless you're using a, a paid hosting service. So a hosting service is something like Blue Cloud or um, GoDaddy or other web hosting platforms, and they essentially maintain a lot of that backend hosting needs for you. But that can range in cost to a few dollars a month to more, depending on the kind of service with hosting that you're looking for. Um, but another pro feature is that it uses a custom domain name, meaning you can have that domain and in just .com or .org, you can make it more um, official for your business. It also allows you to use plugins and sell ad space for revenue. Now, the con to this is it does require knowledge of web development a little bit which makes it a little bit more complicated because of this need for advanced customization. It's also, again, going back to those hosting costs. Um, if you're not looking to 
have additional maintenance with this, it may be a more complicated option. And it also will need continuous updates for your various plugins or website themes. And this can impact how your website is viewed both on a web browser as well as a mobile device. So those are things to consider. But this is not the only option within this landscape. Next, we have Wix, which was founded in 2006 by Mark Klusk and Avishe Abrahami. And it is another cloud-based web development service. And it is another example of business to consumer. And again, it's a great, great um, type of platform that is open to any kind that you can customize per your product. So if you want to sell fishing gear, then you can have a website totally, um, totally based on fishing gear and fishing needs, whatever type of business you're trying to open or support. So what are some of the pros and cons for this option? Well, the pros are that they do offer a free tier to test their service before you officially purchase. Um, they do have complete 24 seven access call support. So if you're having any issues with your web development, that service is available around the clock, as well as the e-commerce is built directly into their platform, making tracking purchases easier uh, because it's all within your platform. No need for extra plugins or things like that. And it also has built-in SEO boosting. Now, SEO is search engine optimization, and it's what helps your website get found by using uh, keywords and terms that Google or another search browser can pull from to have your website higher in search engine rankings. So having that built into your website is a, a really nice support thing. Um, you can do that in other ways by using free sites like SEO Optimer. Um, so it's not something that you necessarily need to have built into your site, but it's very nice that Wix does have this built in. Um, on the other hand, some cons to this service is that the e-commerce is a premium feature requiring an additional subscription. And this subscription can range anywhere from $16 up to $500, depending on the scale of your business need. It also does have limited storage per subscription tier. So if you know that you want to keep your website alive for several years and you want it to hold all that information, that will accumulate more data. And if you are getting close to the top of your storage capability, that means you would have to continually pay more to keep that subscription. Another thing to be aware of is that if you ever wanted to change your website hosting from a service like Wix to something more like WordPress, um, that may be more difficult to switch out of because everything within Wix is pretty much built into that service. Um, whereas with something like WordPress, if you were to want to change your hosting options, you could still pull your entire web website data and just change the hosting with little to no issue. All right. We do have one more platform um, within this option, this type of platform. So Shopify, this was founded by Tobias Lutke. Daniel Wayned and Scott Lake in 2006, and it is a point of sale system. It provides sales management, inventory, and customer data all in one. It is a subscription only um, plan. It has no free plan. And again, the targeted products, you can make a website for anything. So it's a great all-inclusive option, just like Wix. It is a little bit um, similar to Etsy in the sense that when you use Shopify for your business, you're kind of buying into the Shopify platform and Shopify will then promote your store within that interface. 
while this still being your, your own storefront, your own website. So do we have any questions at this time about our, um, about anything that we have covered thus far about our e-commerce management or sales and auctions? And please, if you do have questions, use the chat box at the very bottom of your screen or the Q&A feature close by. No questions? Okay. okay. If they do come up, um, please look at, oops, I see one person who does have a question. If you wouldn't mind typing that in your box. Uh, the fees for Etsy. Um, are you just curious about the uh, the 20 cents per listing fee so, or? So it's just to kind of recap, we can go back to, to yeah. that slide. Okay, so if you can, so questions about the listing fee um, as well as other fees. So the listing fee, um, that 20 cents is per item and it's for usually a period of, I wanna say six months. Um, and then you have to pay that 20 cents again to refresh that listing. Um, the other fees that are listed there, um, it's, it can range and it's going to depend on your type of product that you have listed on Etsy. Um, so they do take another percentage on that final sale um, because Etsy does have built in uh, marketing that they do for all of their shops to promote listings within Etsy as well as externally. So they do take a list, not just a listing fee, but a um, platform hosting fee, and that's that final sale. Um, and then if you are shipping any kind of product, they will take um, a percentage of that postal cost as well. Yes. So and keep in, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I was going to mention that, please keep in mind that um, these, these posted fees that we are listing here are current as of this program um, or a research for this program. They may change over time. Um, they may go up or down. So please do double check with Etsy directly if you do choose to use this option. Absolutely. Um, the only other thing I may add is that Etsy does, um, does try and support their sellers um, with additional tools and services uh, like trend reports that are re released both annually and quarterly. Um, but always double check your fees um, for any kind of platform that you're interested in learning. All of this is again, as Emily said, current as of this time of this program, but it is um, always subject to change. Does that answer your question? Yes, okay, thank you so much. If you have additional questions, please do feel free to add them to the chat box. Awesome, thank you so much. So, Hopping back to our current slide. Um, these are again, just some more options for e-commerce management. Um, the ones that we highlighted, it's not saying that they're better than any of the options listed here. We just wanted to make you aware of some of the bigger names that we have found in our research. So our next category are social commerce marketplaces. Social commerce marketplaces are um, marketplaces within social networking platforms where customers can interact with brands, browse products, and make purchases in the app. They tend to work best for consumer to business sales or consumer to consumer sales. So social um, Commerce platforms, I will mention, tend to increase the confidence of their consumers when making purchases because they have a perceived 
sense of authenticity of the content as well as the brands. And you're more likely to grow your target audience by being involved in a social commerce marketplace since social networks already have your intended audience right there for you. You just need to grab their attention. So it's really key when you're using or choosing social commerce marketplaces to be very strategic with your posts, keywords, and hashtags in order to get the attention of your target audience and get those sales. So which social market commerce, uh, sorry, I apologize, I'm tongue twisted. Um, social commerce marketplaces should you consider? So first up is probably the original, um, in my mind, of the social commerce marketplaces, Craigslist. Craigslist was created in 1995, originally as a free email service to describe upcoming events in the San Francisco Bay Area by Craig Newman. In 1996, he transformed it into a website with a forum where members were communicating with each other as well as selling things. So over time, the website eventually evolved into what it is today, a social marketplace where, where users can list their items in a similar way to um, online classified ads for free. And you can make purchases or communicate with each other um, through the marketplace. You don't transfer payments through the marketplace necessarily, but you do commit to purchasing an item directly through it. Craigslist, if anyone has used it, is known for its no frills design. It looks very old fashioned in terms of the things we find on the internet nowadays, um, which sometimes does lend to questions about its authenticity or trustworthiness. Craigslist is typically best for consumer to consumer or consumer to business sales um, and works best for secondhand or used items since people using Craigslist typically are looking for the best deals and ways to save money. So that includes things like used furniture, used appliances, electronics, real estate. So think um, apartments, uh, rentals, houses, and services um, all work really well on Craigslist. You can use Craigslist to also promote, um, promote things like services that you're not necessarily trying to sell, but you're trying to get that um, customer base for it. So that's like tutoring or real estate. It's, it's really great for that or marketing your goods um, through Craigslist ads. So next up, we have Poshmark. Poshmark was founded in 2012 by Manish Chakra, Tracy Sun, Gautam Gawala, and Chetan Punk Pungalia. Poshmark is not geographically tied like Craigslist is in some other social commerce marketplaces. So it's a great option for selling secondhand items all over the world to a very wide customer base. It's very well known for selling uh, trendy items and known brands, especially luxury goods in excellent and clean condition. Things that tend to sell very well on Poshmark include clothing, shoes, accessories, home decor, and really anything designer. So if you're trying to sell designer products like Louis Vuitton secondhand, Prada, Chanel, Poshmark is gonna be a great option for you to use as a marketplace. It is free to create an account and list items using Poshmark, but do be aware that if you sell an item, Poshmark does take a commission of your sale. Currently, Poshmark takes a 2.95, um, so, so sorry, why did I say it like that? A $2.95 flat commission fee for items that sell for $15 or less, or for items that sell for more than $15, they take 20% um, of your commission for, of your sale. So that means that you keep 80% and they take 20% of that total price that you sell for. Do be aware that again, like any of the commissions or fees that we're mentioning today, these prices are accurate as of this program, but they can and will change at any time. So do please double check this before making your commitment. Facebook Marketplace was launched in 2016 for Facebook users to buy and sell locally. Since then, they've allowed businesses to use Facebook Marketplace. 
Facebook Marketplace allows users to create free local listings. However, you can also create ads for a fee to further um, promote your business or services using Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace is focused on local markets, so items are typically geographically listed and searched for. So it definitely works best if you're doing consumer to consumer or consumer to business sales within the local market, and especially for items that are secondhand. Since like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace users typically are looking for good deals um, or items that are gently used. That means that items like clothing, furniture, books, baby items are huge right now, um, pet supplies, cars. So any of those items that are secondhand is still in good condition, tend to work really well on Facebook Marketplace. Um, it also works really well if you are, are creating, um, so if you're redoing furniture, if you're taking purchasing furniture and flipping it, so making it into something new and unique, that also um, does tend to do very well on Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace typically is more popular with Gen X shoppers, so it is prudent that you're aware of the audience that you're looking to sell to when you're selecting one of these e-commerce sites. So if Gen X um, millennials are your target audience, Facebook Marketplace may be a great option for you. Um, it does require you to have a Facebook account. However, you are not required to have a Facebook business page. Um, that doesn't mean you can't or you shouldn't, it's just not a requirement. And since this is on Facebook, you can cross post it on your personal Facebook profile, on your Facebook business page, um, as well as uh, your friends and families um, or other uh, partners that you may have who have Facebook accounts. So it really helps to increase the awareness of your, your products that you're trying to sell. Facebook does also offer another feature, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, that is specific for small businesses. But so this is just one Facebook option you have for you. Next up is Instagram. So Instagram was launched in 2011 as a social network that was solely focused on visual content. So videos, images, anything that you view. Um, it was purchased by Facebook in 2012 and has since really expanded um, between that, that marriage of Facebook and Instagram, which has only helped to increase your ability to sell using Instagram. So Instagram is probably one of the best social networks for engaging with your customers because it is so visually focused um, and it is so, so popular. So it's probably one of the most popular um, social networks, especially among millennials and uh, what is Gen Z's, apologies. Um, so it, Facebook, or I'm sorry, Instagram allows you to seamlessly do in-app shopping um, through an experience called Instagram shopping and it is mo most probably one of the easiest shopping experiences you will experience on a social network. Um, so all customers have to do is find a post or a reel that they like, click on that item to get the product information, and from there, they're directed to either the storefront of that brand on Facebook, uh, a separate app, a website, or they can purchase it directly through the app. So it's super, super easy, super convenient, um, just a great experience if you're trying to seamlessly integrate shopping and promote your brand and product uh, while people are just scrolling through social media. There is also Instagram live shopping where you can post um, a reel on Instagram and sell your product in real time to your customers. So this is kind of like think of QVC where you're watching TV and you're calling in to purchase your product. It's a very similar experience where you post a real video, your consumers will watch the video and they can directly purchase the product or commit to purchase a product um, in real time while watching that video. So Instagram, like many of these other social commerce networks, uh, definitely works best for consumer to consumer and consumer to business sales. And it is a little bit different in that, yes, it does work great for secondhand products, but really it works well for many, many different types of products, um, especially new and used uh, clothing, jewelry, health products, services. There is no end to what you can and can't try and sell on Instagram. And it is also a fantastic a visual marketing tool to use for your business. Facebook Shop is one of the newer social commerce marketplaces you have available to you. 
It was launched in 2020 specifically with small businesses in mind, and it is easy to set up this Facebook uh, store for your business and to be discovered by your customers through Facebook, which it is optimized for, or Instagram. So like I, uh, as I mentioned with the Facebook Marketplace, which does not require a Facebook business page, Facebook store does require a Facebook business page because it is focused on small businesses and only for small businesses. Um, not only for, but it is optimized for small businesses in mind. So you do need to have a Facebook business page in order to create this, but it is completely free for you to create that business page as well as to create your Facebook shop. So using Facebook shop, you can sell your products using posts, reels, um, or lives um, on Facebook or Instagram. And your customers can purchase these products directly through Facebook or Instagram or being redirected to your company's website. It really makes this a one-stop shop experience for your customers and helps you to do direct-to-consumer sales. Um, and it is a great option if you did not want to create or you don't have the um, current funds to create a business website, it can take the place of that and works very, very well. You can also integrate other e-commerce partners um, into your Facebook shop. So Shopify is one example of an e-commerce site that you can directly link to your Facebook shop and have them work together. So if you have a Shopify, create a Facebook shop, free account, expand your options for reaching your, your target audience. Potential customers can find Facebook business page, Facebook shops through the Facebook business pages um, or Instagram profiles. You can also expand the reach of your Facebook shop by using Facebook or Instagram ads, which are paid, but they help you to get further engagement from your customers. And you can all use the built-in chat features on Facebook and Instagram to communicate with your, your customers and help to really build your customer brand. So with, oh, well, sorry, <laughs> one more quick thing about Facebook shop, um, they do charge a fee per transaction for anything that you sell. Those fees did currently change as of July 1st of 2023 to a standard processing fee based on payment type. I don't currently have the information about what those processing fees are. So I do recommend if you're interested in creating a Facebook shop, you do look up what those fees would be. The final social commerce marketplace we have for you is Nextdoor. So I know Nextdoor doesn't seem like the most obvious um, social, mar social commerce marketplace, but it can be one and can be a good tool if you use it strategically. Nextdoor was launched in 2011 as a private social network for neighbor neighborhoods. So it is something that is very focused on your local market. So if that's something that your product is directed at, it can really help you to reach that audience. Nextdoor does allow you to list local, does allow you to uh, post local listings for free, but you can also post ads which are paid. Ads are great, so if you're trying to promote a service or um, a product, it's really great to use the ads because you're going to be connected to that direct local audience. Nextdoor is great for secondhand products particularly, as well as those services. So kind of similar to some of the others we mentioned, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, Nextdoor is similar in category to those. So it's good for consumer to consumer, business to consumer sales, um, and those secondhand products like furniture, appliances, children's items, and pretty much anything you can think of secondhand. Unfortunately, there is no way to actually make a payment in app or through the Nextdoor site. So kind of similar to Craigslist, um, your consumers will commit to purchasing a product, but the actual payment transfer will need to be completed outside of that system. And just to let you know, listings unfortunately are only good for 30 days. So if you do post something and it doesn't sell within that 30 days, you will need to relist it. Um, but again, listings are free. So there's no limit on the number of times you can continue to repost it. Just make sure that you are aware after 30 days, it does unfortunately get deleted. And as we mentioned um, with many of these 
these options that we were promoting, not promoting, um, that we we're mentioning today, these are not the only ones out there. These are just examples of options you have available to you. So other social com commerce marketplaces available are Pinterest, TikTok, Snapchat, any of these will offer a social commerce marketplace experience for your consumers and are great things to consider um, just depending on who your target audience is and the product you're trying to sell. And I would like to add on that um, you don't have to just choose one type of any of these marketplaces. You can use them in conjunction with each other. Um, as Emily mentioned, some of these are built especially to work with each other. So you could have your social media commerce platforms um, connected with each other, and you could still have your own personal website, or you could still cross promote and post on Etsy. You just wanna think about what your product type is and make sure you're connecting that to get the widest audience that you can for your product. Yes, thank you very much, Caitlin. And that is very, very common to do as well as recommended to cross post between many of these different sites, especially ones that don't offer any kind of fee to create the site. So, oh, it's not pulling up. Uh oh, It's not loading. Um, we do have additional resources for you today for this topic. Uh, our apologies for they're not loading. Um, we do apologize, but the library does offer many other services and programs um, that can support, support you in your entrepreneurial efforts. Oh. So we offer free access to a digital creation space, uh, which has access to free open source software, as well as the paid Adobe Creative Suite. Um, and you can use that to create your own business logos or any kind of graphics or video recordings that you may need. Um, we also offer Book a Librarian, which is a free 30 minute service that you can actually request through our website um, to work directly with a librarian on a research need. If you're wanting to research potential uh, competitors using reference solutions, for your business to see who you would be directly competing with in this area, we can we can certainly help you with that. Um, we offer access to LinkedIn Learning, Udemy, Gale Entrepreneurship, and Gale Business One File, which are all free databases that you can again use directly through our website, plainolibrary.org, and under Research and Learn. Um, since this is not working, I may I, try and pull that up real quick. Yes, so I did post um, the link for the Plano Library in the chat, as well as the resources that Caitlin mentioned. All of these resources can be discovered by going to the Plano Library website, um, or you're welcome to contact one of the librarians here at Plano, and we're more than happy to assist you with this. So we do apologize for these technical challenges. Um, I see Caitlin's pulling up her site, so she will demonstrate this now. Yes, so this is our main website. And for those resources that I mentioned, there's a couple different ways, but I'll show you the easiest one. If you just hover over library at the top of the website, you can go here to research and learn. And from here, you will see a list of all of our available databases. Um, if you go directly to business here, it will pull up all of our business related databases, which again are completely free with your library card. So we have Gale Entrepreneurship, which I'll just show that real quick. It looks like this. You would sign in with your library card, um, but it has specific tools for creating business plans, um, information on funding, uh, tools for startups, and more. And we will actually be doing a program on that virtually like this class um, in September. And hopping back to the website, um, I also mentioned reference solutions, which is right here. And again, um, we have a recording of how to use reference solutions already on our website, but I believe this month we have another scheduled program for reference solutions. 
um, but you can use this to look up information on competitors, US businesses. You can also use it to search for uh, information about your target audience. So you can pull uh, consumer information and research um, certain lifestyle choices to figure out how you can target your consumers more effectively. LinkedIn Learning is also available for access through this page. And this is a website that offers um, access to free learning tools, learning videos that you can actually get certificates for. And you can download those, save them to your LinkedIn page. Um, and it offers tutorials for usage of Adobe products or Instagram social media marketing tools and, and more. Just, it's a, it's a great resource. Do we have any, any questions about any of this? And I've posted most of those links in the chat. So please grab those so that you have access to them. If you want to make sure that you um, have our next program on your calendar, uh, you can also find that information on our webpage. In fact, our fall brochure has been posted and you can find that digitally um, here on our main page. It's under events and classes. You can pull up that uh, digital calendar and, and go through it, or you can also pull up our brand new fall engage brochure here. And everything is listed under business and career. So you can see here, Gale Entrepreneurship will be on September 8th at 3 p.m. Um, we are offering business planning with Link Canvas in November, November 16th, building your brand at Schimmelfenig on December 7th. We have a virtual recording of that you can watch as well if you want to uh, learn more about it in the meantime reference solutions, market research, meeting facilitation, and more. And of course, we cannot leave out twos, which is our monthly entre entrepreneurial meetup group. It is team up for entrepreneur entrepreneurship <laughs> success. And uh, again, this is a monthly, monthly group that meets up for networking and um, workshops geared towards specific business needs. Uh, this month, it is offered on the fifth uh, Tuesday of the month uh, due to some scheduling conflicts, but we are having at uh, the Women's Business Council, I think I got that right. Yes, that is correct. Uh, uh, present at that group meeting to discuss certifications and different things for women-owned businesses. And that's at Haggard Library at 6.30 on um, I think it's August 29th. The, yes, that is correct. It's August 29th. So I did put some of these programs that Caitlin mentioned, as well as some others you may be interested in the chat. All right. But if, if y'all don't have any questions, we want to thank you again for joining us today. Um, when you exit today's program, a survey should pop up. It would really help us out if you would take a moment to fill that out for us. Um, your feedback matters. It helps us schedule and present more programs that will support our community's needs and interests. So if you could, please take a, a minute and let us know. Thank you again for attending. Yes, thank you. And um, please do put your any questions you have in the chat box or the Q&A box. We will be monitoring those. But if you have no questions, please do feel free to exit the program if you have no questions. So thank you so much. We really appreciate you attending today.